I like boys. I'm Sarah and I like girls. And we're gonna try to kiss the opposite gender for the first time. Marsha P. Johnson was an African-American transgender woman, a gay rights activist, and an advocate for trans people of color who was a key figure during the Stonewall Riots. The 60s were a hostile place for the LGBT plus community. Cross-dressing and holding hands, kissing or dancing with the same sex was strictly illegal. Gay bars like the Stonewall Inn were places of refuge where people could express themselves and socialize openly. On June 28, 1969, the police raided Stonewall. A crowd of onlookers fed up with the constant police harassment and social discrimination accumulated outside the bar. Tension built until stones were thrown, igniting a large riot. Protests involving thousands of people continued for five days. At one point, Marsha climbed a lamppost to drop a brick bag down onto a cop car's windshield. Many gay right movements followed, and the first gay pride marches took place across the U.S. a year later. Remember that protesting is where gaining rights begins. Happy Pride. I can take your man if I want to. I can take your man if I want to. I can take your man if I want to. But lucky for you, I don't want to. Want to. I can take your man if I want to. But lucky for you. This is me and my girlfriend Haley, and she decided to dress me. This is just regular outfit. This is some random e-girl dress I had she wanted to put me in. She said she wanted to put me in some booty shorts, so... I hate these shorts so much, so she decided to put me in them. I don't know, this is just like a summer gay. This is Haley's clothes, she thought I would look cute in them. This is just uh, your stereotypical classy butch moment. This is every lesbian TikToker on the For You page, so quick shout out to them. Hi, bun, ears out, uh, sock around the head. She wouldn't kiss me because I was looking like that. And Finn? Just kidding. Part two where I do her outfits coming. An ocarina of time. I'm going to go into the past and tell everybody about the pandemic. Hey, Rob. It's me, I'm you from the year 2020. I came here with an ocarina of time. Ew, you look bad. Rude. Look, an ant ate or ate bat poop and now everybody's dying and you have to, wait a minute. I remember this conversation. I'm gonna tell young us to invest in amazon.com. No, no, I need that. Rob. <gasps> it's okay, Shh. it's me, I'm you from the year 2019. I came here with an ocarina of time. I look good. Sure, but the 2020 version of us looks like shit. Look, you need to invest in- Beanie Babies. No, you have to invest in Amazon.com. Tell mom and dad- Wait a minute. I remember this conversation. I want to party with Mama Cass. No, 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 I need that. I need- So for today's LGBT history lesson, we're going to be talking about St. Perpetua and St. Felicity. It is said that St. Perpetua and St. Felicity are the patron saints of lesbians and same-sex couples. So St. Perpetua, who is on the left, was a noblewoman and Felicity was her slave. But the two loved each other. In fact, St. Perpetua mentions all over in her diary about her love for Felicity and doesn't mention her husband once. The two were arrested for being Christians by the Romans in Northern Africa. The two were imprisoned together and they would hold each other and kiss each other for comfort. This is all according to Perpetua in her diary. Perpetua also dreamed of turning into a male and fighting in a coliseum for Felicity. The two loved each other and they even died together. The two were sentenced to the Roman amphitheater together and they both looked out for each other. They were also beheaded together by the Romans in an amphitheater in Carthage. It is very noticed that the two loved each other. In fact, it is confirmed by professors at Yale, such as John Boswell. So yes, there's gay saints. I am 
so sick of motherfucking straight men 100%. So I used to have this one straight guy friend, let me tell you. Immaculate, bitch. And upon being friends, I was like, hey, I'm fine. You're fine. What's going on here? <laughs> and he was like, oh, I'm sorry. I'm straight. And I had to respect it. Respect his sexuality. I'm not looking like James Charles. Everything was good between us, but he was always a little bit touchy-feely. And I was like, hey, excuse me, sir. Touch me one more time. And you're about to get the suck. The double gut luck special. On top of being overly touchy-feely, he would always be jokingly flirtatious. Like, hey, you look good today. Come here, baby. Let me give you a kiss. And he'd be like, ah, just kidding, bro. <laughs> like, that shit ain't funny. So one night, me, my two girlfriends, and him were all at a party. And I was like, y'all, let's leave. It's getting real lame. And so we all hop in the car. They're in the front seat. We're in the back seat. <laughs> and my friend makes a real sharp left turn, and I fall in his lap. After that, he's looking down at me. I'm looking up at him, and we kiss. The next morning, he don't remember what happened. Remember the time. Here's another fun fact for you, because some of you might actually live in these houses because they still exist in some places. A side-by-side -side duplex. Sometimes you'll find in the basement that there is a door that goes through to the other side that has either been bolted shut or walled over. Those doors existed not because of extended family stuff, which they were eventually used for, but it was first used for couples that would marry each other so it looked like they were straight. So a gay male couple and a lesbian couple would marry. So one gay man would marry a lesbian and so on and so forth. And they'd both live on separate sides. But when somebody of power, a boss or something like that, or family would come over, they'd just kind of swap to make it look like a regular straight couple lived there as opposed to a gay couple. Hi, babe. Hey. I got some new shoes today. You want to see? Yeah. Sorry. This black pair. Oh, Casual, cute. right? Yeah. Cute. I might wear these today. Um, brown this time. Dressy. Work style, you know. Black, dressy again for work. Bro, oh, sorry, babe. Gray, Ooh, yeah. dressy, work again. Okay, one more. And Guys, Donald Trump is having a rally next week and it's free. All you have to do is give your phone number and you can get two tickets. So I got two tickets, but I totally forgot that I have to pick every individual piece of land off of my room floor and then sort them by size so I can't make it for Friday. Oh well, I already got the tickets. And I accidentally just verified it too, so that means there's gonna be at least two empty spots. Guys, that's awful. You should be really careful going to do this, you know, just in case, you know, you can't make it, you know, you don't want a bunch of empty seats. And another thing, guys, if you are doing it, make sure to use the right zip codes just so that they know you are in the area. So today's LGBT history is coming straight from Rome. Today we're going to talk about the LGBT life of this man here, Antinous. Antinous was the lover of the Roman Emperor Hadrian. Antinous and Hadrian had the most famous gay relationship in all of Roman history. The story goes that Hadrian here ended up meeting Antinous in Bithynia. He invited Antinous to his house and they stayed together. There's not a lot of details on how the relationship actually went. We know that they were staying together, but we mainly know about Hadrian's love for Antinous after he died. In 130 CE, Antinous ended up drowning in the Nile River. Hadrian was very upset at the death of Antinous. In fact, it is said that he wept like a woman. Hadrian here, being a good boyfriend, ended up deifying Antinous. He ended up building a city in his name, being Antinopolis, I think that's how it's pronounced. The city was founded where Antinous died. Hadrian also erected multiple statues of Antinous and would make them so beautiful to show off how beautiful and lovely Antinous was. 
Attention, attention boyfriend. It is now time to give me unlimited attention. You have five seconds to report to duty. I can most likely have that report by 9 o'clock tomorrow. That's fine. Just send me an email when it's ready. Okay, I'll see you tomorrow. Love you. Okay, love you too. Bye. Hello? Davidson, I want to clarify there was nothing personal in that statement and that I love all people equally. Oh, yeah, no. No, sir, I, I didn't think anything of it either. I, actually, I, too, love all people equally. Yes, I know. I know you didn't take it seriously. <laughs> I'm glad we can clear that up. <laughs> okay, yeah, thank you for calling. Okay, I will see you tomorrow, Davidson. Goodbye. Okay, bye, sweetie. I've been getting a lot of questions about all the smart technology in my house, so I'm going to show you some of the really cool things. So all my light switches are a touch screen, and they can also be controlled by an app, which is super cool. My toilet is a smart toilet, and you can actually wash your butt, dry your butt, and of course, flush it from the remote. My mirror is a touch screen and has a big screen here and a little screen up there, so I can do like literally everything right from my mirror. The bathroom has a Dyson hand dryer, cause like, why the fuck not? All of my door handles are Samsung smart door handles where you can either push or pull. And of course, there's also fingerprint access. My fireplace changes colors on demand and we have cameras in every single room. I don't know, man, I love technology. Let me tell you guys the motherfucking tea. So my ex-boyfriend's new girlfriend decides to come up to me at a party. He's like, hey, I'm his new girlfriend. No hard feelings. I was like, hey, I was his ex-boyfriend. No hard feelings. Hi, everyone. This is how I pronounce things as a gay. Bottom. Water. Bootleg RuPaul. Sacrilege. God. Human rights. Daily life. I'm here to prove that men are absolute garbage, like on fire garbage. So I'm at work, dude comes in with his girlfriend looking for jewelry. They don't buy anything, they leave. Guy comes back like 10 minutes later. He's like, I'm gonna buy my girlfriend a necklace. I was like, that's very nice of you. So he picks something out, comes up to the front desk, and he's like, I'm doing this to impress you. For, I thought he was like kidding. I thought I was like, what? What does that even mean? I'm doing this to impress you. He's like, I'm showing you that I buy my girlfriend nice things, like implying that if I was his girlfriend, he would be buying me nice things. I was like, I didn't even know how to respond. I was like, the two eyeball emojis with the mouth in the middle. I was like, what are you doing? You are just in here with your girlfriend. Like, she's down there waiting for you. You're in here buying her a nice thing to impress me. Get the fuck out of my store. If I could have left, I would have sprinted down there and found her and told her, trash.